The problem is about spheres, but I'm actually going to start by doing circles for two reasons. One is that I don't want to draw spheres. Two is that there's no reason to me that this 3D should be... Um, that 3D should be different than 2D. Like, it's... I'm surprised. What happened to G6? We'll do it after. Um... Should definitely be different than 2D. Uh, is that so? Uh... Let me, let me at least look at the 2D case briefly, just because it's actually very hard for me to draw or think about 3D. Uh... I, 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 I just want to do the 3, 2D case first, because, um... If it turns out that I can't do it at all, um, I'll switch to 3D. But I want to at least draw the 2D case first, so I can get a sense of what's going on. So, here, um... So on the surface of each planet, consider the set of points not visible from any other planet. So... Okay, what, what if I just make an equal, like, an equilateral triangle? What does that set look like? It's like... All right, so okay, so for n equals three, it's literally the uh, for for in the two D n equals three case, it's the assertion I think that um, seems to be the largest planet. No, the planets are all literally the same size. Doesn't this literally fail for the two planet case? No, no, no. The the the, the planets are all equal size, right? Wait, I'm confused about comments about largest planet. Like, I think the prompt says equal size. Okay, cool. Uh, so for n equals 3, I I think it's literally assertion that the sum of angles in a triangle is 180. For, like, yeah. So that, that seems like it's really bad. <laughs> and for... Uh, in the 3D case, if I have four spheres, um, let's say at the vertices of a regular tetrahedron, So the correct concept corresponding to angle is something that's called a star radian, and or at least that's the measure that you use for it. And I have no idea what the heck these things are. So, oh no, no. I, I think I changed my mind, and I think this is going to be. Uh, well, it will either be really clean, or I'm, it's going to really require me to do something. A star, but they're called the the measure is called a star radian. And I, I know that word and basically nothing else about them. Let me think a little more about the 3D case, because I really don't want to draw more spheres. So, you know, you can break the equality like that. You know, here's, if I put one inside, that's, you know, kind of silly. However, um, it, let's ignore that case. And then what happens if I do a square? Okay, so that's still bad, right? Like, I get, this is actually still sharp. And it'll still be sharp, in fact, if I have a quadril, just generic convex quadrilateral. But here, that's here. Here's like a random generic convex quadrilateral. Then I draw the um, the mutual tangents like so. Uh, yeah, and I mean, I'm I'm kind of hand waving these examples because right now I'm just sort of scouting out for what's around here. Um, what's the backseat policy here? Um, you can say any... I, I don't actually have a policy. I think what people have been doing is just... Um, they're allowed to say stuff as long as they haven't seen the solution before. Like, obviously, if you've seen the whole problem, you should not start by pasting the solution, but you are welcome to join in. This is a collaborative effort because I'm not good enough to do these myself. Uh, yeah. So anyways, if I'm not mistaken, this is basically like... Uh, <laughs> convex, yeah, if it's convex, I think it's actually sharp, at least in the 2D case. So this one is 2D, 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 3D. This is why I wanted to do the 2D case first, because I'm so, like, I, I think thinking about, um... Oh, that's true. Actually, we only need to consider the convex hole, because if you're inside the convex hole, um... Is it true? You can... 
Yeah. Okay, actually, that's really good because I was starting to worry. Uh, observation, only need to consider convex hole. Because if you're inside the convex hole, um, then you have a bunch of rays. If I'm inside the convex hole, then I have like a sphere or a circle, depending on which version you're in, right? Then it means I have a ray that goes like do shoo, uh, well, actually, hang on. Hmm, maybe this is not that clear. Uh, how, okay, how does this work again? What does visible mean? If I'm inside the convex hole, these, this arc is entirely visible because... Okay, I see. Got it. Uh, you can see either here or here. Right. So that makes my life way, way easier. Um, because now you can just kind of assume they're convex. And from what I've seen, it looks like equality just holds when they're convex, right? There's no any no something's wrong something's wrong. Uh... It's just it's always equality. It's if it's convex and if it's for the stuff that's inside the convex hole, you get plus one or something. Wait, yeah, I think this is just. Is that it? Okay, so in in the in the two D case, let me let me work out the two D case before I try to think about steradians, because I will confuse myself if I think about steradians. So we saw an argument that the convex hole is sufficient because if you're inside the convex hole, everything on that planet is visible, and you can just kind of delete it, and we expect the problem to still be true. Um, oh, actually, just take the convex hole, and then when you delete the things inside, you don't gain any new stuff. So in the two D case. Um, what I do is I draw like the quadrant, I take the convex hole, you know, these are centers, so I will join them up. And then the visible, the, vi the region that's not visible is, um, yeah, the region that's not visible, okay, never mind. You don't even need to re refer to induction, right? You just say, take the convex hole. Then everything that's like outside here, these, these red arcs that I've... They're not quite red arcs. Uh, Alright, let, let me get this right. So there's like a rectangle here and this rectangle here. And everything in that red arc is not visible. Let me draw this bigger. I, I'm starting to see what's going on. So... I want to make sure I don't screw this up so that I can put this on YouTube without looking stupid. Alright, so here's like a random generic quadrilateral. And then I take the centers, doink, 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 doink. And then, you know, there might be more points in here, but they don't, af they don't affect the fact that on this convex hole, there will always be invisible regions, and the way you get them is here. And then, for example, here. Actually, conveyor belt is a good way to think about it, but I can do it a little more abstractly like this. Um, actually, conveyor belt argument might be like the sort of conceptual reason why these 90 degree angles I guess it's like you go full circle, right? If you follow the direction of the conveyor belt, you rotate exactly once. So you take the stuff on the convex hole. There might be stuff inside it, but if you have circles inside it, they don't, you know, they still can't see anything outside. And now I have these regions, which just add up to 360. Because it's just, uh, you, you rotate around. Uh, right, so 
what what's equivalent is that in um, so in the 2D case, it amounts to the fact that the sum of angles minus uh, sum of one the sum of exterior angles. is 180 degrees, or er, 360 degrees. So in the 3D case, I need some analogous statement like this, if I believe this is what's gonna happen. Um, hello, the pipe boy. Scale the center inwards, don't change the radii, and the statement is obvious. How can I scale them? Like, is there... The quadrilateral is not cyclic, so I don't... I guess I can take a point and scale them at different speeds. I see, you scale them at different speeds so that... Oh, okay. Same speed? Well, they won't all overlap at the same time if you do same speeds. Like dilation. Oh, maybe we have a different definition of speed. Okay, I agree. You di you um change the ratios at the same rate. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I, I agree. It's by scale factor. Okay. Yeah. So the argument that three VT is proposing is um, you 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 take a center point. I'll call this O or something. All right, and then here, shoo, mm -hmm. and you imagine like applying a homotopy of uh, ratio R, ratio R at O, that initially starts at one and then drops to zero. And uh, now, yeah. And then you'll get that this, they just sort of cha have the same. Um... Yeah, homotopy to centers. And what you'll get is that they sort of cover disjoint parts of the spheres. So they're kind of, yeah. <clears throat> Anyways, okay, what I wanted to go from there is I need a similar claim, which I'm interested in independently, which is apparently, I guess the following should be true. In a convex polyhedron, um, the sum of the, <laughs> I, I feel so stupid saying this, like steradian, exterior steradian, is always four pi. And I guess this is true, although I feel embarrassed that if it's true, I've never heard of it. I can't even, oh, 3D Geo is the worst. I think what you wanna, yeah, what, what you actually might be able to argue is that for every point on, like every position, um, Actually, for, even for n equals three, n equals three is a little bit degenerate. Um, I guess it's still fine. Uh, it finishes if my claim is actually correct. Like basically, there's some sort. There's a homotopy argument. Okay, let me think a bit about the homotopy argument. Uh, uh, okay, I I agree that much should just work, uh, because they they are disjoint. And in general, it seems like there's like one point. Something, something still bugs me. I'm trying to f say exactly what.
Captain Gauss Bonnet, is that the name of the result? Yeah. Okay, I feel like I have an embarrassing lack of control over 3D Geo. Okay. Uh, this, okay, it does have a name. This is Descartes' theorem on total angular defect, and indeed a special case of gauss bonnet So I guess I have a lot of 3D Geo to learn. Um, I think the homotopy probably works fine. I'm just curious independently, because if this is true, it seems like it should have a name, and it looks like it does. Yeah. I'm also curious if it's clear. I, I actually like the thing that was suggested where it seems like it should be the case that for every point, there's exactly one sphere where it can't be seen. And why is that true? Uh... Circum rectangular hyperbola. I, th I actually think it should be rectangular circum hyperbola. Oh, I, I think that was a mistake when I first taught the class. That's not true, even in multiple spheres for each point, even in 2D. Oh, no, the, the point is, the, I think the thing Dada Calculator was suggesting was something like, uh, like for example, if I look in the three o'clock position, like three, you, if, you draw, if I draw the three o'clock on every sphere, there should be exactly one sphere for which it's not visible. Um, like those, those four guys I marked in green. Um, I'm trying to see if there's a nice direct proof of that. I'm not seeing it. Okay. Well, anyways, yeah. We, we... I'm curious whether there is a way that you can translate that into a solution. Um, but I'm, I'm not seeing it right now. Or like, well, I mean, if it's true, you can... Hmm, how do you do it? Also, what happened to Andrew? Uh, directions of each planet. Okay, well, I'm just going to leave it at that, I think. Kind of sloppy of me, but I don't think... 